being sorted out as well. Uh, yes, I'm just sharing it to LinkedIn now as we speak. Okay. Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this uh, webinar, and uh, we're very grateful to be collaborating with the team at USP. We think this is an important uh, uh, contribution that USP is, uh, is making to efforts on the African continent to build vaccine manufacturing capacity. And I think that uh, we all sing the same tune when it comes to partnerships, partnering and, and, uh, and partnering. Um, that this is not a, a race that we run alone. So uh, I'd like to extend my thanks to Jude and the team at USP for reaching out to ABMI and uh, creating this opportunity to share some perspectives from the USP side of, um, of your plans to engage stakeholders on the African continent. A little bit about uh, ABMI, uh, we as an organization were set up uh, more than 10 years ago to uh, focus on capacity building with respect to vaccine development and manufacture on the continent uh, for a time such as this. Uh, and the time such as this uh, I'm obviously referring to is COVID and the devastating impact that this pandemic has had health-wise, economic-wise, uh, just uh, socially as well. Um, we raised the flag uh, back then, saying that we need to be more prepared. And thankfully, um, the COVID has changed the course of engagement with respect to African players uh, from politically, economically, technically, and otherwise, in terms of engaging and joining forces uh, to push forward this agenda of African vaccine manufacturing um, into the future and so that we are more prepared. Um, so our mission is to advance uh, African vaccine manufacturing capacity building on the continent uh, through efforts with partners. And this is where uh, this collaboration with the USB comes into full focus. I'm going to hand over in a moment to uh, Dr. Simon Aguali, who will be the moderator for the session. And I'm very happy to uh, introduce Simon as a friend and uh, as a colleague at, uh, at AVMI. Uh, Simon has been one of the pillars of AVMI from the early days of our formation, and more recently as the lead uh, within the Partnership of African Vaccine Manufacturing on uh, what is called Build Program 4, which focuses on technology transfer and IP. And uh, Simon, together with other AVMI colleagues, has, uh, has led that working group on uh, AVMI's behalf as a contribution to the framework for action within the Partnership for African Vaccine Manufacturing. Simon is also the CEO and founder of Innovative Biotech, an American um, and Nigerian based company focused on vaccine development and making great progress towards uh, uh, setting up vaccine manufacturing capacity uh, in Nigeria um, as one of the key contributors to, uh, to this capacity building effort. So Simon, without uh, further ado, I'll hand over to you and warmly welcome the team at, uh, at USP as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Patrick, for the introduction. Uh, you have actually done my job. <laughs> I, what is left now is to introduce uh, Jude uh, Wokiki. Uh, who we introduce with other colleagues and then uh, go straight to the job of the day. And then uh, after the presentation, I mean, if you have any question, you can put them in the chat room. And then after the presentations, uh, we will read those questions to the presenters and then you uh, will take it from there. 
so uh, of course this started informally with Jude. We had you know this discussion and then uh, here we are today that led him to travel to South Africa. I met with Patrick and um, the mRNA hub and, and, and other uh, organizations uh, to discuss the possibility of having this workshop uh, in December. So uh, as a way of introduction, of course, Jude uh, uh, Wokeke is the vice president and director of the Promoting the Quality of Medicine Plus at the USP where he manages USP's large and technical complex multi-layer group cooperative agreements between USP and USAID. He has more than 20 years of experience in strengthening uh, medical product regulation and quality assurance systems. Prior to his current role, Mr. Wokike served as the US FDA's liaison, working with the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research on the US uh, uh, President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, uh, called PEFLA, uh, which is uh, an antiretroviral drug program. Prior to the FDA, he spent nearly 10 years providing technical support to countries in Africa and Asia for improving regulatory and quality assurance systems. He spent a decade in the pharmaceutical industry and also worked as principal pharmacist for the government of uh, Botswana. Uh, Mr. Wokeke has served on International Expert Advisory and Review Committee, uh, professional scientific associations, and international technical working group. He is the recipient of the 2020 IPS Medal Award, Award, which is awarded by the Industrial Pharmacy Section of the International Pharmaceutical uh, Federation. So over to you, uh, Mr. Wokeke. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Wonderful. Um, hello, everyone. It's really my <laughs> honor and um, gratitude to be here. Thanks, Simon, for the great uh, introduction. And to your co-chair, Patrick Tipo, and to the members of uh, AVMI, we are really very excited for, for this, to have this opportunity to discuss with you all. Uh, we hope that this webinar will indeed be uh, the beginning. It will help to kickstart a long-standing partnership um, uh, and relationship that we at the United States Pharmacopeia uh, will be having going forward with AVMI uh, as we both share the same vision, uh, the vision for uh, uh, advancing uh, vaccine manufacturing and access in Africa. Uh, so it's really a little bit uh, belated that we're getting to get together and work together. But now that we're here, we're going to make the best of it uh, to the benefit of um, uh, patients in, in Africa. Uh, so as, as uh, Dr. Gwale mentioned, I have a couple of my colleagues here. So maybe I can... Um, uh, mention their names and call them to say a few things, uh, a few lines on introducing themselves as you have in your in the bio uh, that went with the advert for this um, uh, webinar. So they will probably just uh, give you some top lines about their background before we proceed to a, a first set of slides to introduce who we are at USP and why this collaboration is important to us. So first I would like to call um, uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Fuad Atouf, who, uh, who leads a uh, global biologist work at uh, the United States Pharmacopeia. So, Fuad, if you can come on and just say a few things. Uh, thank you, Drew. Um, Fuad Atouf, I, I head the biologics program at USP that entails work on a variety of biological medicines uh, going from small peptide, um, you know, through proteins and vaccines, cell and gene therapy. Um, the, the program uh, is really geared toward uh, looking at um, manufacturing and testing challenges and looking at solutions together with stakeholders. So I'm excited to be here to get today. Thank you. Wonderful. 
Thank you, Fred. And next is uh, to my colleague that uh, really was essential in getting us together here today. Um, Zlaka, uh, Zlaka Kostova Leonard is uh, uh, the director for vaccines within the PKM Plus program. So, Zlaka. Thank you, Jude. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, very happy to be here. It's taken us, like Jude said, quite a long time to actually uh, make this webinar um, a reality. I, like Jude said, I lead the uh, vaccines uh, initiatives under the Global Vax program uh, at USP. And um, uh, prior to that, I've been uh, in the vaccine development uh, world, um, developing vaccines for um, our U.S. government um, and, and as well as uh, other um, biologics prior to that. Um, I'll stop there and we'll talk about Globax during the presentation. Wonderful. And then last as one of our panelists is uh, Dr. Frederick Meadows. Mm -hmm. uh, Fred is a senior technical advisor at, and leads our GMP team, our CMC GMP team here at the uh, PKM Plus program. Fred? Yes, thank you, Jude. Yes, as Jude mentioned, I'm senior technical advisor for the um, CMC um, product supply management team. Uh, essentially, we provide support to manufacturers to help improve their uh, systems to ensure that they generate um, quality, safe, and efficacious um, products of all types. Um, so prior to joining uh, USP and the PQM Plus program, I'd spent 20 odd years in industry, um, working in pharmaceuticals, medical device, um, both small and large molecules. And I'm um, just happy to be here today uh, presenting to you and look forward to the relationship and working with you all. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Fred. Yeah, so I, I, I can move straight to the slides and quickly just go through a few slides before I bring in uh, these, my colleagues that have introduced themselves to take the rest of the presentation. So yeah, so we are United States Pharmacopeia, um, a 202, 202-year-old <laughs> organization. Um, you know, we've been on the same mission uh, for that number of years. And, um, and today we will really be looking at uh, you know, some highlights of our efforts to strengthen vaccine manufacturing and regulation in Africa. Uh, next slide. So that mission, as the next slide is coming on, yeah, that mission has been uh, to improve global health through public standards and related programs uh, that help ensure the quality, safety, benefits of medicines and foods. And um, it is really um, one mission that most of you may be familiar with, uh, USP, you may know from two aspects. One is the reference standards. Well, uh, the other one is the documentary standards, uh, the USPNF uh, uh, pharmacopoeia that some of you, you know, knew from pharmacy, chemistry, basic, mess, uh, basic sciences schools at the undergraduate level. Uh, so that mission has remained the same. And uh, we, we think that day in day out, the need to ensure that there are public standards for the uh, identification, uh, for the purity, potency, and strength of medical products remains a very important uh, issue. Uh, USP uh, is a official pharmacopoeia of the US. It is the standards that we set that are enforced by the US FDA. A similar uh, place in the regulation uh, exists for another 40 countries and then uh, 140 countries where there is a reference to USP, even if it's not uh, the official pharmacopoeia in those countries. Um, so uh, it's, and, and I'm sure in the course of your work, you have uh, had to come across uh, USP standards in one shape or the other. Next slide, please. Uh, and so it, to, to be able to accomplish that enduring mission, we have uh, 1,300 plus staff, but staff is really one side of the story because uh, USP is built around volunteers, expert volunteers that work, that are experts globally that contribute to the science and the standards that we set. 
But just looking um, narrowly on stars alone, uh, more than 1,300 working all over the world. I'll point your attention to 55, 51% of this stuff that uh, within the global science and standards uh, unit or the division at United States Pharmacopeia. So really a science-based organization, true and true. Uh, and then uh, you have 10% uh, of us coming from the global health and manufacturing services, which is the arm, um, literally the implementation arm um, of some of those uh, USP standards. Next slide. And uh, that implementation arm uh, um, has been doing this work uh, for 30 years because this all started with um, uh, um, an approach uh, an unsolicited approach that the U.S. government to USAID made uh, to come to USP uh, in 1992 to say, well, uh, this work you do, we think is relevant for other countries in the world. Um, will you be willing to do that? And so that's at the tone for the very first cooperative agreement we had with the USAID in 1992. But over the course of those 30 years, USP has helped facilitated and supported countries to improve regulations, uh, build and strengthen laboratories, improve medicine safety, and help in getting health systems to become more and more accountable. In doing that, we've uh, supported 50 plus countries, uh, worked with uh, literally hundreds of manufacturers. And indeed this slide uh, can be updated because in terms of really engaging with manufacturers, introducing the concept of CGMP, and helping them uh, as they progress towards making products according to international standards. It is uh, hundreds, not just 100 plus manufacturers. Out of these, about 41 of them, a little bit more, again, <laughs> uh, need some updates, uh, have received some form of international pre-qualification, uh, WHO pre-qualification or international stringent agency approval. Or, uh, um, uh, no objection for procurement from groups like UNICEF, um, Global Fund, and others. So as you will see, uh, we have literally uh, been a vehicle to supporting the, the, the adoption of uh, current good manufacturing practices. And some of these products that had got, been gotten to international standards are small molecules predominantly, uh, but some are, are parenterals, some are very um, challenging formulations, um, and uh, some are what you could call uh, in strict terms these days to be complex uh, generics. Uh, we are work in vaccines is also one that is 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 getting hold, uh, but prior to um, uh, PKM plus work in that area. There's extensive capability and background that USP have in work in that area that you hear subsequently in the course of this presentation. In terms of laboratory, an area that you all know a lot, a lot about us, more than I can state here, uh, we have supported, again, literally scores and scores of laboratories to, again, introduce the idea that laboratories must have some uh, level of, uh, uh, of evidence, some level of uh, capability to generate test results that can be relied on uh, for regulatory purposes, but as well as for ensuring the substandard and falsified medical products are, are kept at bay. So we have about 25 of uh, those laboratories that have achieved the uh, ISO accreditation 17025 and a host of others that have achieved WHO pre-qualification. Next slide. And in the course, one example of showing how this work happens in reality in terms of the technical areas or the domains of it uh, is to look at the public health priorities that we address. And that is across COVID-19, you know, some of them that we're just showing you now, COVID-19, supply chain resilience, and nursing the uh, advancing uh, biomedical sciences, as well as expanding regulatory capacity. Um, our work, most of the presentation today, we're touching aspects of this as we move along. Next slide. So in this slide, uh, I wanted to just show you a glimpse of what we've done, the, particularly the non-vaccine ones uh, for COVID-19 response. So you will see on the left side, um, the, the, the COVID-19 vaccine handling toolkit, which was essentially a work that, that we did to ensure very early in the, uh, in the epidemic and upon the 
uh, the emergency use authorization that was granted to Pfizer, BioNTech, uh, mRNA vaccine to ensure that there are no doses that are lost due to uh, dead space or um, challenges health workers may have in administering the vaccine and also to address potential quality issues, particularly beyond use data and others. A very great resource, uh, highly valuable at the beginning of the pandemic and still valuable today. Uh, in, the in the middle, you see the USP methods to assist in detecting uh, substandard and falsified, particularly falsified uh, rendezvous, as you all know, became one of the very first early COVID-19 therapeutic that was uh, put out and USP was able to work with Gilead and develop some uh, very basic methods. Uh, definitely this isn't a, a monograph, um, but it was some methods. Uh, interesting, um, you know, methods like um, IR uh, spectroscopy, UHPLC and, um, and the NM, um, NMR uh, method te technologies that can help to identify falsified um, uh, rendezvous. And lastly is, uh, 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 you know, hand sanitizer, where you all know at the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of issues and concerns about how to compound and formulate um, uh, alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Next slide. And so this might be my next as we make the transition essentially to really say in the midst of all that within USP, there's a program that really helps to implement it and more so even some of the implementation work that will happen in Africa, which is the Promoting Quality of Message Plus program that I lead. Uh, we have a shared vision with USID to sustainably strengthen medical products, quality assurance systems in non income country. Supporting vaccine regulation and manufacturing is a critical part of that. Next, and I guess the last, all right, or here I transition it over to my colleague, Zlaka. Thank you, Jude. Uh, I will be uh, talking to you about uh, specifically the work that we've been doing uh, the last several years on strengthening the vaccine manufacturing and regulation in Africa, and it falls uh, under this PQM uh, plus program that Jude mentioned, which is funded by uh, the US Agency of International Development. Uh, can we take get the next one, please? So uh, this is just a quick overview of, overview of our vaccine ecosystem. Uh, we try and uh, strive to take an integrated approach to uh, addressing global health issues. And um, basically, like for everything else, and like uh, Patrick noted at the beginning, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has been uh, also a trigger for us to refocus our attention from the, um, from the small molecule world that we've been, uh, you know, historically been involved in to uh, ensuring the quality of vaccine and biologic products as well. And we basically, this, this three gears represent our three main um, areas where are working in an integrated fashion to deliver uh, our, our goals. Uh, one is global biologics, and that is the group that uh, Fouad uh, will be talking more in detail later. Uh, they set uh, the best practices and analytical for analytical procedures for the manufacture and quality testing of products. And then uh, we have the global health programs and under the global health programs, as you can see uh, on the right hand side, uh, the top one in blue PQM plus is this uh, USAID funded uh, program that Jude mentioned and I work under. Um, and in addition, we have a non USAID funded uh, part of this program, which also allows us to do even more work, donor funded work, um, extending, you know, the, the, our uh, capabilities to bridge gaps and catalyze and interactions with manufacturers, NMRAs, laboratories, and, and other um, international organizations. Next, please. So uh, in doing uh, this, um, our work, we, again, as a science-based, uh, well, a scientific organization, we take a science-led approach. 
and uh, try to bridge, strive to bridge the needs and find solutions through understanding of the challenges that may be unique to each area, um, geographic area that we work in, and also catalyze the implementation on knowledge of the gaps of the low and middle income uh, countries. And our the, the, and this below represents uh, kind of the, the overall areas where we work under uh, a lot of work under infectious diseases. This has been going on historically. Of course, uh, antimicrobial resistance is something of concern. Uh, in addition, you know, education and thought leadership uh, for any kind of um, products and technologies and uh, new things that are happening in the realm of um, medical products and then manufacturing laboratories and Re regulatory systems, which we'll uh, speak about in a little more detail uh, in a little bit. Can I take the next one, please? So um, we do not work in isolation uh, and we most definitely work uh, under the PAVM uh, framework. Um, as we all know, the African Union has set a goal to increase the vaccine manufacturing on the African continent to meet 60% of the demand by 2040 and has mandated PAVM to develop a framework of action to execute this. Uh, this framework of action lays out the key interventions that are required to enable the development of a sex sustainable vaccine manufacturing industry in Africa, and including the establishment of these uh, of the regional capability and capacity centers uh, to support talent and critical skills development. And they've uh, under this they've uh, developed eight bold programs to support the vaccine manufacturing ecosystem. And so our work uh, kind of falls primarily under the regulatory strengthening, the technology transfer and IP, as well as the research and development and talent development areas of these eight bold FFA programs. Next. In addition to that specifically, uh, now talking uh, about our vaccines work, we also leverage ongoing global initiatives and one of which you are very um, familiar with is of course the mRNA technology transfer hub program led by the WHO that is uh, the African hub is in uh, South Africa and, uh, okay. and the good morning everyone good morning Hello. 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 And, and the spokes uh, are, uh, you know, they're international spokes, but um, focusing in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, we are working in Senegal, um, Kenya, and Nigeria, in addition to South Africa within, within this uh, current project. So, and the next slide, in fact, I can introduce our vaccine uh, initiative. Uh, so this falls under this PQM plus program, and it's kind of like a, a, a specialized uh, initiative, uh, which is named Global Vax. And it's a US uh, initiative to uh, accelerate the vaccine delivery assistance around the world. And um, we were engaged to provide technical assistance to six African countries specifically, uh, which are Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, Rwanda, Senegal, as well as South Africa. And our work, uh, our current work in these countries consists of building regulatory and quality control laboratory capacity, um, strengthening regulatory systems, support the nascent vaccine manufacturing industry, as well as providing strategic planning assistance. Uh, next, please. So uh, we have, in these six countries, we have individual uh, work plan activities. And in addition to these uh, kind of you know, individual channels, we also have uh, two joint activities where we uh, will be bringing uh, the, the participant countries uh, as well as anybody else that may be interested in uh, for uh, joint activities. One of the activities that I would like to uh, talk to you today specifically is 
this vaccine manufacturing workshop that we are um, working um, to, uh, to have in uh, South Africa in, at the beginning of December. And the, the objectives of this joint activity are to bring together the vaccine um, manufacturing ecosystem, again, which consists of NMRAs uh, and NQCLs on one hand, uh, the vaccine manufacturing industry on the other hand, and then academia uh, that uh, pr provides the workforce uh, that is needed to, to achieve the, uh, the goals for Africa 2040. Um, so this workshop is also intended as a forum of engagement and networking be between these different stakeholders and advance the objectives of the WHO supported mRNA hub. Uh, and like I said, uh, of course, you know, is, is trying to contribute the PAVM 2040 target. Um, can I take the next one, please? At a very high level, this uh, um, is the workshop agenda uh, for this uh, workshop. It kind of uh, we look at it in in three um, in three parts. Uh, one part will be uh, really providing an overview of vaccine development and manufacturing with lectures by subject matter experts. Uh, that will uh, take us through um, the end-to-end -end from the vaccine development um, through manufacturing and uh, dossier preparation and submission. Uh, the emphasis will be on mRNA uh, vaccines, but that is not to say that uh, the rest is not being in covered. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, GMP, of course, technology transfer, the analytical development, uh, the phase appropriate um, development and the phase appropriate uh, then regulations uh, on the NMRA side. So we're trying to make it as a comprehensive uh, fundamental um, workshop for anybody interested in seeing the vaccine development and manufacturing process as a whole. Um, we also have a component that will involve in case studies uh, with real life case studies presentations by the workshop participants. Uh, the intent here is to, to give the forum to the participants, the African participants, whether they are the NMRAs or the industry or whoever has an interesting um, case to bring uh, to a, and this will be like small working groups uh, really, an in, the intention is to just provide uh, a way for brainstorming in a, in a very neutral area by bringing the NMRAs and the manufacturers together. And, and here is uh, where uh, we would be interested in hearing um, from any of the uh, webinar participants if there is any interest uh, on your side to uh, join our case studies and join the workshop. And then the last part is, of course, the networking. Again, like I said, you know, the overarching goal of the workshop, in addition to the technical aspect of providing the foundations of uh, vaccine development and manufacturing, is this networking and an advocacy component uh, where we'll discuss and review a biomanufacturing competency framework that we have started uh, developing in um, partnership with the University of uh, Purdue University in the United States, and also have discussions about uh, the possibility of a formation of an Af African community of practice that uh, with the intention that this was would be housed under the regional capacity and capability development centers. And uh, the goal is to facilitate the establishment again of collaborative and sustainable working relations among the participants in the continent. And uh, next one is our uh, brand new beautiful banner that advertises this workshop. I should note that participation um, is uh, free. Uh, in in-person participation is possible, um, but we are limited in space. So if anybody is interested, uh, please get in touch with us sooner than later. 
uh, but we are also going to be live streaming uh, the entire event. And uh, uh, so, because we realized that, you know, not really knowing what the size uh, of the interest from the industry side or even on the academia side is. Uh, so this is, hope, we're hoping that this would be the first of many more interactive workshops uh, in the future. But yeah, if you have any more questions, please, uh, you know, we're, we're cooperating and collaborating with, with AVMI as, uh, you know, you can see in this webinar. So please reach out to them and they will contact us, uh, contact you with us, or you can directly register at, uh, at the link provided here. Thank you. And I think this is uh, now the time for, uh, handing it over to Fred, who will be talking about um, the details of our capacities in the CMC area. Thank you, Zlatka. Yeah, before Fred comes in, uh, this is important. Uh, have it in mind. If you don't have the answers, now Fred can go in. Uh, we want to know your selection uh, process because, uh, again, you are working in six countries. Uh, uh, the other manufacturers, you know, we have other manufacturers in other countries. Are they also going to be invited to this workshop or you are restricting yourself to this six uh, question? So just prepare for that and, and then we'll take Fred and then we'll come back to you. Yeah, I can, yes, for time's sake, I, okay. I will qu quickly respond. No, we are not limited. So <laughs> the, the work that we do in the six countries is, is you know, um, it's one thing, but this workshop is open to anybody uh, that would like to participate. Okay, we'll come back to that after Fred. Sure, uh, yeah, we wanna make sure that Fred and Fuad have enough <laughs> Sure, okay, over to you, Fred, sorry. <laughs> no problem, thank you so much. Um, you can move on to the next slide. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to give an overview of our, our support to manufacturers, and also we'll talk a little bit about our regulatory system strengthening. But um, our work is not just confined to those areas. We have other technical areas that we do provide support um, and are currently supporting in terms of um, vaccine manufacturing. Um, one is the laboratory system strengthening, as well as the regulatory system strengthening. Um, obviously, um, assisting manufacturers in terms of the, our CMC area. There's also workforce development and also there's pharmaceutical sector strategy and planning. So all of these are sort of um, supportive areas that, you know, uh, support in terms of establishing the vaccine manufacturing. Next slide, please. Um, Jude had alluded to um, the breadth of our support to manufacturers, which have been primarily in the small molecule area. Um, however, it's not just confined to uh, medicines. Uh, there are different products that we've supported outside of, of medicines. So we're called upon to do lots of different things and um, consider ourselves to be quite agile in terms of uh, adopting um, the, the, the needs of, of the ask in terms of the products. Um, so, um, you know, as Jude had mentioned, we supported lots of manufacturers, over 170 um, and growing um, in 20 different Asian and African countries. Um, there's been um, currently over 50 um, different manufacturers. Again, that's evolving um, slowly but surely. Um, we supported uh, the approval of over 30 different medical products. And um, as I alluded to, is it's also um, during COVID, we supported um, very rapidly the support of um, nine PPE manufacturers um, that achieve CE marking. So it's not just confined to, um, you, know, uh, you know, the markets in low and middle income countries, but also um, in some instances, uh, assisting those manufacturers to achieve uh, market authorization in, in other countries. Um, so the objective overall is to increase the, the quality assured essential medical products of uh, public health interest in general. Next slide. So this slide um, depicts our general approach for supporting manufacturers, although it says WHOPQ, which is the primary um, support that we uh, assist manufacturers, but it need not be married to the WHOPQ process. The overall goal is to increase the manufacturer's capability to produce safe, quality, 
um, 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 and, and quality uh, medicines and, and medical products of all types. So it not uh, not necessarily has to be married to the product. And it's very, um, uh, this approach, I would say, will get you 90% of the way, irrespective of the type of product that you're working on. And the general scheme is uh, when we engage a manufacturer is to first understand what their gaps are obviously understand what their target is. In some instances, that manufacturer may have stringent regulatory authority approval in mind, as I mentioned. Uh, most often, it's WHO pre-qualification. We um, conduct um, a gap assessment. Um, we conduct an on-site assessment to understand what those gaps are. We develop a CAPA plan. And for essentially the, the, the entirety of that, that um, this technical assistance we provide, provide to the manufacturer, it's about closing those gaps and also getting a commitment, a firm commitment from the manufacturer on, on the approach and, and the timelines, et cetera, for closing those gaps in order to reach um, WHO pre-qualification or, or um, other regulatory authority approvals, local regulatory approvals, et cetera. Um, and that in, includes us giving TA towards the dossier um, um, compilation, um, you know, performing um, mock inspections prior to WHO or the regulatory authority um, coming on site to inspect them and all the way through to the approval um, um, to the end. And I would also like to say follow up after um, the approval to ensure that we have um, sustainability with those manufacturers. Next slide, please. So with respect to vaccines, so I, I depicted, you know, our general approach for um, supporting um, manufacturers in general. So how has PQM Plus and USP bridged the gap? Well, we've staffed up with um, people who have expertise specifically in vaccines. Um, as I mentioned before, you're 90% of the way there in terms of um, the general approach for improving the quality management systems and the CGMP compliance of the manufacturer. The, the gap is the expertise where you superimpose that approach on the actual systems associated with the vaccines or biologics manufacturing. And so how do we um, support um, vaccine manufacturers, technology transfer, um, where we can glean lots of information from technology transfer packages as with mRNA vaccines, um, quality management systems, GMP and, and GDP, as I, I mentioned before. Um, regulatory approval, um, quality and validation. And um, all throughout, as you can imagine, with um, new technologies like um, mRNA vaccines, you know, the expertise are, are, are slim. So you get glean a lot of this information um, by actually, uh, you know, gleaning the information that's available, obviously, um, in the technology transfer packages and, and working alongside um, partners to, to understand more about um, the, the, the new technologies. Over to the next slide. Um, so we have um, all types of ancillary activities. It's not just direct support to manufacturers, but you know, again, it's about um, understanding what are those cross-cutting needs of manufacturers that apply irrespective of the product type. So we, we do things like uh, manufacturer landscape analysis to understand what those bottlenecks are. Um, again, those cross-cutting things. And we use these uh, uh, this understanding to mold our approach and support to manufacturers because things are constantly evolving. Um, we like to leverage our relationship with um, WHO and other regulatory authorities. Um, we, for example, we have a memorandum of understanding with the WHO that enables us to, you know, understand what are the latest trends in terms of the issues and, um, you know, what is it that we need to do, again, to evolve to better assist the manufacturer. Um, obviously, with the breadth of um, manufacturers and, and, and understanding that we've gleaned from the support, we have that data that we, we look upon to improve our, our, um, uh, our work with the manufacturers. And again, you know, those gap analysis are very telling of um, what are the issues of the day. And, and ultimately what this does for us, it, it allows us to be more agile in terms of um, working on projects like vaccines, advanced manufacturing technologies, risk-based inspection, um, et cetera. Next slide, please. Um, obviously, 
there needs to be a strong regulatory system in order to support um, vaccine manufacturing. We have a rich history in terms of supporting um, regulatory authorities to improve and increase their maturity level um, and using those nine GBT functions as um, kind of our guidelines in order to provide that support to regulatory authorities. One missing area that, you know, obviously if regulatory authorities have not dealt with vaccines is the lot release. So that's an area that we're providing lots of support at the moment in terms of lot release. Um, we are helping um, regulatory authorities with that in terms of um, their NQCL um, uh, capabilities to, to understand the process and, and giving them hands-on, um, you know, technical assistance in those areas. Next slide, please. Okay, so this just details the lot release process. Um, you know, first, um, the manufacturing summary protocol needs to be reviewed by the NRA and, and, and the National Control Laboratories. Um, before release of the vaccine, um, there needs to be product consistency. Um, and where the NCL does not have consecutive lots, um, there needs to be an interpretation of, of the information. Um, for example, yearly product reports. And in the case of um, imported vaccines, any lot release really certified issue um, by responsible NRA from the in, in NCL from the producing country can be used. And um, there's a need for independent testing um, should, and it should be carefully considered in the establishment of lot release procedures. Next slide. Um, some key elements of um, um, lot release is all vaccines must go through the lot release program. And some of our activities include capacity building, as I alluded to, um, and product quality assurance program and post-market activities, as um, Zlatka had mentioned a little earlier, and improving coordination and um, collaborate between the stakeholders to improve um, the NMRE's capabilities um, for lot release. Next slide. Um, so with respect to um, risk-based um, approaches, there are four groups. The first is uh, group one, um, where you have pre-market only in clinical lots and consistent, consistency lots. Um, group two is um, related to lab testing and protocol review. Group three is protocol review only. And then group four is periodic testing. Again, these are four um, groups in terms of um, risk-based um, lot release programs. Next slide. Um, now I'll turn it over to my colleague Fawad, and um, thank you for your um, for, for listening to me. Oh. Thank you, thank you, Fred, and um, I appreciate the background. Again, again before before you sp uh, speak, just have it in mind, Fred. Uh, the gap assessment, you know, uh, that will lead to WHO pre qualification. Who pays? So you have that in mind. When we come to question and answer, we can address that. Over to you. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I think Fred gave a really nice background that can help with um, the next few slides that I would present. So if you can move to the next slide, my goal is to really talk about some of the tools and the solutions that we developed to support um, manufacturing and testing of vaccines and biologics in general. We're gonna start with showing this flow chart that shows a little bit the value chain maybe or the life cycle. We focus on manufacturing and distribution. There are many other aspects in the value chain, of course. But if we focus on this and start looking at the different step, you can see there are different discrete steps actually leading from uh, procurement of a raw material to manufacturing all the way to administration. And within each step, if you look at the, um, the, 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 the criteria or some of the activities or some of the requirement, there are, there are so many aspects that need to be tackled before you can dig into manufacturing. And for example, like for the raw material, I think you need to make sure that you have uh, the right so source of the raw material, you qualify them, you have consistency in those raw materials so that you, for successful manufacturing. So if you go through each step, it's the same concept. I think Jude talked a little bit about the vaccine handling toolkit that relates to distribution and administration. I will just maybe focus for like uh, uh, 10 seconds or 20 seconds on 
as you go from um, drug substance manufacturing to formulation and still finish, there are a lot of uh, aspects to tackle around quality and some of the processes and assays. So to that end, what we put together is um, an analytical quality assessment toolkit. And uh, it's on the next slide. And we focused on a, on a couple. If you can go to the next slide, there are a few areas that we covered. So before I go there, if you look at the middle here, what you see is the different vaccine and technologies platforms, whether it's um, viral vector-based or um, uh, VLP or mRNA or DNA. I think for each of them, what is really important to know that you have really some compendial tests that are established that are written in a pharmacopoeia like USB, but also you have some specific tests that are needed for the, that vaccine in particular. But for the compendial text, and you see the panel at the bottom to the left, those are your basic tests for like things like cosmolality, pH, appearance, uh, sterility, and the toxin and things like that. So the good news is you really have some of those tools that are available out there that you can already use. I think for uh, the specific test, uh, what we did, and uh, you can see to the, to the right side, uh, if you focus on mRNA vaccine, we developed what we call an analytical toolkit, which is a set of USB documentary standard that provide information on those tests. It's not the description of tests themselves, but it's some best practices that can help actually initiate those tests. Additional detail can be found on the next slide, if you can go to that one, please, where um, the, the two uh, vaccine platforms or technologies we started with are um, mRNA vaccine and viral vector-based vaccine because they emerged, and that's some of the lessons we learned from COVID-19, they emerged at some of the most promising technologies to um, develop and manufacture vaccines. So what we did in that space is we, we put together like a, a guideline and they're posted on the website and the mRNA guideline has been posted a little bit earlier, the viral vector-based vaccine only in recent months. And we use that as a way to engage with stakeholders such as this group of stakeholders and get their feedback on how to improve the methods or what are the potential you know, challenges with executing on the, of those methods. If you look at the, those guidelines, which you can find uh, in the link that I've provided here. Just one thing to note that like on the mRNA vaccine guideline in the last uh, five plus months, and the comments from more than 30 organizations and, and some of the major comments relate to even asking for additional tests because the initial guideline focused on the bulk substance. And one of the requests that came up frequently in the comment is to have additional information on the, the drug product. So the finished product with the LMP. So if you can go to the next slide. I wanna just discuss maybe a little bit the mRNA to say that um, what, what we learned from COVID-19 and from mRNA that also um, the, the, the mRNA type of technology has been actually explored for a number of infectious diseases, uh, not just SARS-CoV-2, but also you know, Ebola, Zika, and RSV. And each time it focuses on a target protein, a surface protein, or a protein of interest within uh, that virus, and I think that just uh, offers really a, a nice actually approach where you can uh, use the same um, you know, technology and the same platform and develop vaccines for other infectious diseases. Um, the, one of the, the things that emerged also is, as I mentioned, formulation, lipid nanoparticles have emerged as an effective vehicle to deliver COVID-19 vaccines. And it's been uh, explored for other vaccines, but also for other um, therapeutics. Does it, um, does it help or address all the issues with delivery? I, I think the answer is probably no, because aside from those lipid nanoparticles, other element component of the formulation, such as buffers, antioxidant, non-reducing uh, free radical scavengers, they all, all can be used to improve the stability of the mRNA therapeutic. So there are great opportunities, they come with challenges, but I think with the tools that we put out there, I think there is really this um, you know, framework where we can work together on 
uh, giving this uh, type of uh, therapies to, um, to, to people. If you can move to the next slide and try to wrap up. Um, I, I just wanna highlight that the work that we do on vaccines is part of a broader strategy at USP for biologics. And you can see that uh, from a, a class of product, the focus, and I'm using just here examples, is not just vaccines, but also oligonucleotide, cell and gene therapy, protein, proteins, monoclonal antibodies, and other type of product. And I think one of the, 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 the really like advantages that we have is once we have those technologies uh, for the analytical testing, for example, if you establish some of the technologies for testing for proteins or for uh, cell and gene therapy, some of it is really applicable to vaccines. Like if you have a nucleic acid type of method that is established to assess uh, quality of a viral vector used in gene therapy product, well, that same type of approach can be used with some adjustment and some optimization, and it will be adjusted to some of the vaccines that are using viral vectors. The same thing with other you know, quality attributes. So I think the notion is what USP is doing is really like um, developing standard solution that cutting across different type of product with some common tests that apply. Um, also, I think um, at the bottom of this slide, what you see is not specific to classes of product, but more those cross-cutting issues like micro microbial assessment, impurities, um, you know, uh, data analysis related from genomics. So I think this whole like landscape or ecosystem at USB allow us actually to make more impactful um, work on the vaccine side. You can go to the next slide, please, just to maybe wrap up here. Um, to say that success for us, like for um, to support our mission impact, is really to have those tools and solutions in the form of um, you know standards for to cover different type of product. But that's not the only thing that that is um, you know relevant here. In addition to having the standards, really make sure we use those tools to 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 promote like and to um, you know to do training and to collaborate with other organizations to. Uh, do some, um, you know, tech transfer that have been mentioned uh, earlier by my other colleagues and make sure I think we use the work that we have to advocate for, um, you know, uh, quality of vaccines and, and therapeutics in general. Um, I think I'll stop here and um, go back to uh, Jude or um, Simon. Um, and yeah, that was my last slide. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, the USP team, uh, for this very exciting presentation. Uh, what we can assure you is that this, the recordings will be actually sent to all the manufacturers and uh, intending manufacturers on the continent. So uh, to do that, we need to address some key issues. Uh, the first, uh, is uh, uh, Zlanka, you know, I mentioned earlier the uh, workshop that is coming up uh, in December in, in South Africa. Again, like I said, uh, uh, from what Jude presented, uh, you will be working in six countries and uh, we have manufacturers uh, in other countries as well. So what is your selection process and the uh, fiscal meeting that is going to happen in South Africa? Are you going to finance or fund all the participants? And uh, how many participants are you going to fund? And what is the selection process? So that is uh, you know, very important to know. And then um, for uh, Fred, uh, Again, manufacturers, we want to know, uh, you know, you will help them to get to WHO uh, PQ. So who pays for, I mean, you're going to identify the gaps and then you see how uh, to address uh, the gap to help the manufacturers to get to WHO pre-Q. Who pays for, for these services? So it's important. Uh, for us, as we are sending this recording to manufacturers, uh, because of course they will be uh, in, uh, independently contacting you to help them in the whole process. Uh, how does USP 
uh, operate, uh, who pays for, for those uh, services over. Thank you, Simon. I'll take the first question, and that, that's a very le legitimate question to ask. Uh, so in terms of the selection process uh, of the six countries, um, as you know, Jude mentioned, and I reiterated, this is uh, a donor-funded program, PQM Plus, um, with USAID funding. And so the, the selection of the six countries that we uh, have this, um, in the Global Vax Initiative, it's, it's driven by USAID. Uh, and again, you know, this is a, an initiative with a, a defined period of performance, um, but that doesn't mean that in the future, it, you know, it is going to be limited to these countries uh, and, you know, anything is possible in the future. We're uh, always positioning ourselves in a way that we can uh, be in fact impactful is in as many countries uh, as possible where we are needed, where our services are needed. Um, as far as the workshop goes, so again, you know, it's the, the, the participants that we are able to fund under this program are limited to, um, to about 30, 35. And uh, that selection process uh, has been uh, more uh, limited to NMRAs and, Q and QCLs because one of the main things that we're doing under this initiative is strengthening the regulators and, and the laboratory testing, the QC testing capabilities. Now, having said that, uh, so we, when when I'm uh, when we say that the uh, participation is is open, uh, the the funding is not there for us to be able to fund any additional participants, but uh, we may through other means um, be able to fund or or facilitate uh, the participation of, of others. Uh, and that, that was the reason why we, uh, as, uh, as we were designing and planning this workshop, we decided to uh, incorporate the live stream component, knowing that we had limitations in the number of people that we were able to fund and that maybe not everybody is capable of self-funding. Um, Jude, did you wanna add anything else uh, to this? Um, just very quickly to say completely agree with uh... We lost you, Jude. Uh, sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. just to completely agree with Luck and also mention that the ES is targeted at six countries, uh, but the resources, the knowledge, all that we're providing is going to be available um, uh, for other countries that are interested in, in uh, building their capacity for vaccine manufacturing. You know, so in the course of the work we do, the good thing is that the deliverables out of uh, the work we do are uh, all in public domain. They are going to be in public domain and they are going to also, most of them will be pushed over to the PAVM, uh, you know, RCCC that like I mentioned. So the whole idea is that it contributes to the overarching objective of PAVM to build sustainable capacity in the continent, right? So, so we, the, the six countries are, the six countries are mainly our index countries, but the resources coming out of the uh, implementation of the activity will be available to all. Over. Fantastic. So uh, you have, that means you have funding for 30, 35 uh, participants. And, uh, you know, as part of the conditions, you know, for assessing this fund is to fund participants from these six countries only initially. So the question is if other uh, countries, I mean, that are not in, uh, part of your initial uh, experiment, uh, let me put it that way, want mm -hmm. to send their, you know, uh, staff to participate at this meeting, and then they are willing to pay for, uh, you know, the participation. Would they be open to this? Yes, uh, most definitely. However, the second limitation <laughs> that we have is uh, the space, uh, which the space and, and uh, the accommodations that uh, we have been uh, 
uh, working to, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, to secure. Uh, so that's why I think, that's why uh, I would encourage uh, anybody that may be interested to uh, get in touch with, with us uh, sooner than later so we can make a judgment call as to where we are gonna have to uh, you know, have a cutoff for the uh, in-person participation. I think I, from my you know, side, I would say that at the beginning, we didn't quite uh, know um, what the interest level uh, would be. Uh, but when we spoke to Patrick, he was very, Patrick and Ibrahim, uh, they were extremely excited about uh, this workshop and you know, encouraged us to reach out uh, to the AVMI membership. And so, so this, this is kind of, you know, it's wonderful that is uh, growing, um, but <laughs> maybe, like I said, let, let's maybe we need to treat this as an experiment and uh, and you know collaboratively see uh, what we can do to to maximize our capabilities uh, to make this successful for you know anybody that may be interested. I think that's really all I can say at this point. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, you. Uh, you know, like you said, uh, December, let's see how successful this becomes. Uh, yes. And then if it is very successful and there is this huge demand, uh, we can always talk to other uh, organizations to repeat the uh, workshop, uh, you know, as, as we proceed. So uh, over to you, Fred. Yes, and I think, Simon, the, uh, the, the question has been answered. Um, it's donor funded. Um, what's in scope of our donors, um, you know, it's covered in terms of uh, these G GMP gap assessments. And so um, just to further add what the support looks like, we'll have individuals who are very expert in their, their roles um, to, you know, be dedicated in uh, uh, helping assess those manufacturers and helping them reach their goals in terms of PQ and, and other targets for them in terms of regulatory approvals. So that that's the, the short answer. Over. Yeah, but uh, the the question, I mean, the key question is, who who pays? You went on mute, Simon. Okay, sorry. If a manufacturer wants to engage uh, USP to help them in getting to WHO PQ, so who pays? Ah, uh, for the actual PQ. So um, I, I will speak about um, some instances where, um, you know, mostly it's, it's the responsibility of the manufacturer. There have been circumstances um, where there have been assistance. I can't speak about that as a possibility under this program or not. Again, that's at the discretion of the, the donor. So, um, but, but th that's typically the case. Um, there is, um, you know, has been some cost sharing uh, you know, those types of instances in the past. But again, that is of the discretion and the scope of the project and the, and the donor. A question here, uh, it said, apart from the pooling of resources from this international philanthropic uh, organization is providing funds for vaccination, such as malaria vaccines, for an example, which other method or suggestion can be recommended with regards to financial perspectives for funding vaccination for Sub-Saharan Africa? I think this one is for Jude. Right, right. Yeah, and I think it's a very good question because it's not just uh, the work we do. So the Global Vaccine Access Initiative that Zlaka introduced um, spans beyond support uh, to cis African countries for regulation and manufacturing. There are other aspects of uh, that I think is general is comp is um, uh, about a 400 million initiative from President Biden, and so there are other uh, um, uh, aspects of the work that helps to address uh, vaccine deployment, um, um, administration, getting shots in arm, and all that. Uh, so uh, there is a link that if you if there's still more interest that we can provide for you to read other aspects of it. Uh, but I think, you know, one thing that is very clear and that you all know the background to this is the extent to which uh, Africa was not able to access vaccine much earlier uh, in the course of this. So this is an opportunity now to build a broad 
based capability. Uh, and I dare say, maybe not just only in mRNA, but other vaccine technologies, so that going forward, uh, these sort of um, issues do not occur again. And we want to make sure, again, reiterating my commitment, that we want to make sure that the resources that Zlaka and the rest of our team uh, are preparing for the purposes of this uh, workshop and the other aspects of the work we do will be made available to uh, AVMI members and to the PAVM RCCC. Um, uh, I and uh, uh, Dr. Fuad Atouf have been having discussions as well about some resources from his division that can also be very valuable to our uh, colleagues in the continent. So we really are thinking about how this will be an opportunity to help uh, extensively. Over. Very much, uh, you know, Jude. Uh, I think uh, our time is up, so I'll give the USP uh, one minute each uh, for your closing remarks. Let me start from uh, Sri Lanka. Of course, yeah. Thank you very much, Simon. Yeah, I'm uh, very happy. Like I said at the very beginning, uh, it has taken us several uh, several months after our initial discussions. Uh, with Patrick uh, to make this webinar happen. Uh, I'm glad that uh, we, you know, we're here today and uh, we're able to share with you uh, some, you know, at a very high level, of course, some of the work that we do uh, on, on global health uh, issues. Uh, thank you very much for everybody. Great, Frederick. Yes, I'd like to thank everyone for giving us the opportunity to speak to you today and, um, Obviously, we look forward to working with you in the near future. Uh, we're living in some exciting times, exciting technologies, and we have a, a staff that's um, ready to, um, you know, assist in this effort. I think we, we're, we're making history together, and um, just look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Over. Great. Uh, Phil, I hope I pronounce it well. Phil. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I, I th thank you again for the opportunity. I, I, I hope I gave a very little overview of the work we do. And that work is really behind supporting the technical assistance that my colleagues from uh, PPM Plus actually are champions actually in those areas. I think I see our role as helping with uh, facilitation and adoption of these new technologies. I look forward to working with everyone on this. Thank you. Fantastic. And finally, uh, Jude. Well, thank you so much. Um, uh, you know, it's really finally a dream come true to have this session with um, the the AVMI uh, and and under your uh, co-chair and leadership, uh, Dr. Agwali and uh, uh, Patrick Tipo. We are really very excited. Um, and my colleagues and I um, really are poised to be of as much help as we can, um, primarily through PCAM Plus, but beyond, even beyond. So hence, uh, we were able to um, have um, uh, Dr. Frada to, to join us so that you can get a, a feel of the extended capability we have within USP uh, in working in biologists more generally. Uh, but I think uh, as far as the Global Vaccine Access Initiative, the Global Vaccine Implementation, we see you all as partners and uh, we want to really invite you to work with us to succeed. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, you can be rest assured that, like I said, the recordings will be sent to all manufacturers and uh, we'll be very happy to work closely with you to organize uh, these events in December. Uh, again, apart from the participants, uh, I think uh, we'll, it will be important to have uh, either the CEOs of all the manufacturers and potential manufacturers on the continent to be at that meeting so that we can have that high level uh, meeting because uh, as you know, vaccine manufacturing is all about quality. And then working with a reputable uh, organization like yours uh, will be a plus for, for, for the manufacturers and for the continent so that we get it right. 
uh, from the beginning. So we look forward to that event and please always count on our support, uh, you know, to make this uh, happen. So thank you very much for your time. I know USP is early. You woke up 5 a.m. <laughs> here to uh, be part of this. We appreciate the sacrifice that uh, you made uh, to, to give this presentation. So thank you very much. And then uh, we look forward to working with you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. You. Bye. Have a good day wherever you are. <laughs> thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.